They can mean a game of chance or skill. Which does this look like? To young Mark Fidello, a Scottish schoolboy, it looks thrilling, glamorous, dicey and dangerous. To Mark, the Grand Prix drivers had seemed mere speedsters, heroic figures, reckless daredevils. They them, he crashed. But what is the truth about motor racing? Listen now to someone who's really on the inside. This man. You might be surprised to learn that racing drivers leave nothing to chance. They're not daredevils. They have a tremendous amount of self-control and attention to detail. I'm Jackie Stewart and I'm a racing driver. After many, many years of driving racing cars, I've seen a lot of mechanical failures and have had a lot of accidents. I've also learned that there are three very important things in my business. Preparation, road craft, and absolute obedience to the rules of the road. In wrong hands, cars can be terribly dangerous. And in wrong hands, so can cycles. You know, the racetrack and the public road demand exactly the same care and caution. Because believe me, both can be busy, dangerous, nerve-wracking places. In fact, if you asked me who faced the more dangers, me in a Grand Prix or a young boy on his bike, I'd have to say a young boy on his bike. Cycling, like motor racing, is not a game of chance. It's a skill that has to be learned. Treat it as a game of chance, and the stake literally can be your life. More than a hundred boys and girls were killed on bikes in Britain last year, and more than 10,000 injured. In Scotland alone, in the next year, 600 children of between 10 and 14 will be involved in cycling accidents. This school has 400 children in that age group. Within three years, one, two, three, four, five, six, at least six of these children could be killed or seriously injured on bikes. And that probably through lack of care and skill. It could be this boy. It could be this girl. It could be this boy. God forbid. Jackie Stewart in his 30s, born in Dumbarton, who graduated from riding his bike to school to become champion racing driver of the world. But he is not just a champion. He is also the most responsible of competitors and the most safety-minded. He campaigns incessantly for safer gear, safer circuits, safer cars, safer driving, safer everything. Behind the row, behind the railing, please. What's your name? Mark. What did you do with that? I really meant that, you know. I have got two children myself, Paul and Mark. But they live in Geneva. And you know, when it comes to that learning bit in cycling, boys and girls in Scotland have one tremendous advantage over them. And that's this, the National Cycling Proficiency Scheme. Before we take a cycle on the road, they must have a good bicycle. It must be in good order. Every year, thousands of young cyclists enroll for these special training courses under expert teachers and go in for the proficiency test that follows. Among them, on this course, young Mark. And he and I were destined to meet again and talk about each other's problems, and not least the problem of how to learn to handle a machine in the first place. I didn't start in Grand Prix motor racing. I had to learn my trade. I had to start to begin with in a lesser formula of motor racing, club racing, amateur racing, and slowly build up to I finally get to the position of being a Formula One driver in world championship races. The National Cycling Proficiency Scheme is how young cyclists can learn their skills. You know, as Mark and I chatted, I became amazed at the similarity in our problems. And I was staggered too how similar the lessons I have to remember every time I race are to those that Mark was learning in his course. Start at the front here. What is the first thing you come in, in, in contact with? Sorry. The tyres. Okay then. So the important part about the tyres is that they are hard, quite solid, that they have no ball parts on them, and that you don't have any cuts on the actual tyre. 
It's the same with me in motor racing. My tyres are designed with no tread. They're supposed to be like that. But they're the only contact I have with the road. They have to be right. When I take this bike up, for instance, now, I take the wheel there and I move it to see if I can find any side play. So I move the wheel from side to side. If it is slack, can anybody tell me how to tighten it up? To tighten the wheel up if it's play on it? Yes. You t tighten the two... Uh, you, you tighten one here. There's a cone in there yeah. you would tighten. And there's a special key there which you can tighten the cone there and make sure, of course, that the wheel runs true after that. Much the same with me. The wheels have to run free and true. We have the brake blocks. Well, first of all, they must be good. You can't have them worn. What does the block sit in? The shoe. The brake shoe, that's right. And you'll notice that the brake shoe has a closed end at the front and not a closed end at the back there. And very often we find boys and girls and mums and dads, as a matter of fact, buying brake shoes and blocks, putting them on, and they put them on the wrong way around. When I was a youngster myself, a friend and I, going down a hill, he put on his brakes, bing! Out went the brake blocks, the same at the back, they'd all been put in the wrong way around, and he landed without any brakes at all. And he landed right down this hill. Luckily at the bottom was a farm with haystacks, and he went right into the haystacks. Accidents do happen. In one particular case, I had a, a brake failure at about 180 miles an hour. Lap. Jackie Stewart on this, the first lap, out of the race already, but not hurt. Well, there were good safety precautions on the racetrack itself. My car was strong and robust. Another time, however, I had uh, a crash in Belgium where I was travelling very fast and I hit a big pool of water, a big puddle. Let's have a sip. Mm. And there, I, I had a situation where the car hit this puddle, slewed off the road, Went across, hit a building, and of course, in this particular case, I was I was injured and lay in hospital for about, oh, four or five weeks before I was ready to race again. So accidents do happen, but the big thing is to try and avoid them, is to try and make sure that before the race starts, that one thing's certain is that your car, your machine, is in good condition. We come to the chain. The movement should be not more than half an inch. And of course, well, what is the purpose of the chain? Why, what have we, why have we got a chain? Yes, that's the power, that's the power that moves your cycle. And can anybody tell me if it was very, very slack, how you can tighten it? You can take the link out, uh, I prefer that the second way you said that was to move the back wheel. Slacken off these nuts here and pull the back wheel back along these guides there and the next thing is, of course, remember to tighten them up again and that will tighten your chain. Of course, I've got no chain to drive my car. My power is driven through the gearbox. I think it's too low on almost every gear. What are you getting in top, then? Getting 10, 5. Tremendous attention and care is given to it, just like your chain. How would you know if the seat was the right height? Could I come across here a wee bit? Yes. Sit in the saddle. Sit in the saddle and, and what? And if All right, then. Let's ask Mark to do that, then. No, it's both slack and it's just a fraction too high, so of course we can take that down. Right, Mark? Fine. Your bike probably doesn't fit anybody else because you're one particular height, your legs are a certain length and your arms are a certain length. Same thing with me. I'm having to stretch for the clutch pedal. We have to put it a little bit closer. It can't be much. My pedals are set exactly for my feet. They're tailored for me. Much the same way as my seat in my racing car is tailored for me. It's just made for me to sit in. How about the height of the handlebar with the seat? Yes, Mark. It should be approximately the same. In length the same. And, in and a very simple test for you and your bicycle is to take any sort of straight bar like that, and if you can hold it along the point of your saddle there and the handlebar, if that is about level, that's the seat at the right height, and then the handlebar at the right height. Even in full throttle, I could be doing with the pedal a little bit closer again. Try it without the nose on, eh? Now, do you see what you're doing wrong there? You've got your pedal in there. When you turn your wheel, 
you might bump your toe on there and fall off. And the other thing is, if you put your toe back on there, you can use the pedal as though you were using your foot like a hand, and you can actually be pulling your pedal up and down. Okay, so it's much safer and much better to have the, f the ball of the foot like that on the pedal rather than right in the heel there. Okay, so all the time, both feet, pedal with the ball of the feet. Right. So it's a question of being able to use your pedals properly. Now, of course, to do this, your feet have got to be in exactly the right position. Let me see you stopping as though a wee boy had run in front of you. Are you ready? Stop! Here was one shot we had here. This was a boy pulling the back, the front brake on first, and he just took, like, took a header right over the handlebars. Very important that you pull on the back brake first and use the front brake just to steady your bicycle. Back brake first every time. Now, this is when you have to maneuver in heavy traffic. You might have to go slowly. So let me see you cycling slowly through the blocks. Pull on your back brake a wee bit and pedal all the time. Now, slow down, slow down, slow down. Now, that's, you see, you didn't put on your back brake there and you weren't pedaling properly and that's why you did it all wrong. Would you like to go back and try it again? Hold the pedal with your foot as though you were holding it with your hand and pull the pedal round. Pull on your back brake a wee bit, slow down. That's the idea, keep pedaling slowly. That's good, that's fine. For every lesson I have to learn in motor racing, there was a parallel in Mark's course. Oiling. Instead of pointing out all the parts, if you think of all the moving parts, everything that moves on the bicycle, you can oil, and that means that your whole bicycle is, is quite secure. But be very careful when you're oiling there, not to allow the oil to drop down onto the brake blocks. Because if you do that, you're not going to be able to stop because the brake blocks become spongy and they're no use to you at all. What's the best way of avoiding accidents on track? I think the best way is to try and make sure that before you ever get onto the track that your car, the racing car, is in first class condition. You know, you have to depend a great deal on, on your mechanics. They've got to be sure before that car gets on the track that nothing's going to break, nothing's going to happen. Much in the same way as you, before you go out on your bicycle, that you've got to have everything in good condition. Oh, I don't think I need it. This one's in Britain. This one in Brazil. Wherever it is, it looks a very different sight from a boy cycling in the middle of a town. All the same, you know, we're both thinking, or ought to be, about much the same things, according to the rules and being aware of the people around us. I've got to look at my gauges, I've got to look at my tyres occasionally, I've got to look at the track ahead, I've got to be aware of the other people on the racetrack, the same way as you. You've got to be totally aware of what's around you. Because on the road, it's not your road, it's not my racetrack. It's going to be used by others, and you've got to be considerate to them. Right, now, I want you to start away as a, you were starting from the curb. You've come out of your house, you're on the roadway, you're going to start away and cycle off to turn right, see. Let me see what you would do. Ready? Anytime you like. 
No, stop there. Stop. No, go back. Did you see what she did? What did she do wrong there? Right. She forgot to look behind before and after she signalled. She didn't look behind and she gave a very poor signal. So let me see you looking behind, giving a clear signal and moving off of your hands and the handlebars. Right? Good. And a clear signal, palm to the front and move off. Good. Next one now, the same thing. Good, that's very good. Pedal up in the air and move off nice and smooth. Good. Whether you be driving a race car or doing anything else for that matter, the most important thing is to really keep calm and be sure that whatever you do, you're doing positively. Let me see you give me a slowing down signal. Not just a wee one, up and down to your side like that. Right, good. All right, keep together. Now, slowing down and stopping. Now, stop. Slowly, gently, no. See, you're not doing this correctly. You're forgetting to look behind and signal. And you must be aware of where traffic is all the time. If you're turning right or left or stopping, starting, look behind before you do it. You can't lose concentration. You must concentrate on what you're doing. You can't look around at the, the countryside like we're doing now because we're doing a different thing. I'm driving a racing car. Everything has to be built around what I'm doing. Going to turn right. Look behind, palm to the front, a clear signal, keep your hand up all the time. You didn't keep your hand up all the time to let traffic know where you were going. From here, you're looking behind, giving your signal, and keep your arm up all the way out here to let cars behind know where you're going. Okay, right up to here, and then drop your hand back in the handlebar. Up to here and stop, and look for traffic. Look right, look left. Look all round, see there's nothing coming, all clear, give you a signal again. Give you a signal again to make sure everybody knows what you're going to do. Back in the handlebars and straight across and off to the right. Good, that's fine. Now, the traffic lights are green, on you go. No one finger, no one finger. Straight arms. Obey the traffic lights now. The amber means stop. Safely. And red also means stop. Red and amber also means stop. And now green, go. Don't cycle with your hand in the air. Put your hand back in the handlebar. When I was at Silverstone watching you racing, I saw these men with the big flags standing at the corners, standing all around the track. What were they doing? Well, they were flag marshals. They are, in a way, my road signs. Because when we're racing, we've got to be told if there's a car close by us, sometimes, because we are in racing cars, vision is not as good as it can be in the road. I mean, our mirrors, of course, are there, but it's not quite so easy to see other cars because there are a lot of them around. If there's an accident up front, they wave a flag to let us know that there is an accident. Perhaps there's a problem round a blind corner and they will face with it. In the same way as when you're approaching a pedestrian crossing or a a danger area. There's usually a sign on the road or the highway to let you know about it in advance. Really, it's your highway code. Now, as you can see, you have a whole lot of signs and so on to remember. Now, what is the point? For instance, say you were going off to your grands on Sunday, you had to cycle three miles, and say there were no signs at all. There were no signs like that, no signs like that, no signs like that. And all the cars were allowed to do exactly as they pleased, and you were allowed to do exactly as you pleased. What would happen? Yes? It'd be smash-ups. It'd be chaos all over the place, wouldn't it? So therefore, that's why we have a whole lot of signs and that's why you have a lot of guidance, a lot of rules in the Highway Code for you to study and to obey. You know, there's nothing sissy about knowing the Highway Code. Because if you don't know it, it's, you just don't know the code of ethics on the, on the road. If I didn't know my code in motor racing, I would have troubles. Do you know if your wife ever worries when you're in a big race that she could get killed on? Oh, I think she worries. I don't think there's any doubt about that because, you know, motor racing can be very, very dangerous. Of course, I've been in it a long time. In fact, 
I've lost many friends motor racing. And I think if young people ever saw the terrible sadness and destruction to other people's lives, when a tragedy takes place, they would be a lot more careful on the road because if something ever happened to you, the terrible grief that your mum and dad would go through, you just can't imagine how bad it would be. Now, I've lost mm. friends very close to me, and I tell you, it hits you very, very hard, and it's not going to hurt you, you see, because if anything happens to you or I, it just happens like that. There's no great suffering or problems. The trouble comes to others. And it's them that you've got to think of. And it's for that reason, we've all got to be really very careful. All right, boys and girls, that's just about all we can teach you. You've worked very hard. National cycling proficiency training has considerably reduced the number of accidents. Thousands have enrolled for these courses. It's now up to yourselves. Read the highway code, practice in safe places, and the best of luck in your test when it comes along. But right. I'd like to see every boy and girl who cycles take, take part and out. pass the test. For Mark, there's a happy ending. He passed his test. A happy ending for me as well. <laughs> That's a lot. Come on. Come on. For me, winning that race was rather like Mark finishing his proficiency course. Well, Mark, I'm really pleased that you've passed your cycling proficiency test. It must have been quite hard, and I'm really happy for you. Now, the point is now, you know, it's not a question of, since you've passed that, to give yourself the feeling that you know it all, because there's still an awful lot to learn. I've been racing cars for oh, a good number of years now, and almost every time I go out, I learn something else. In addition to which, every time I go out, I've still got to be very careful. Because if I do something wrong, if I don't concentrate enough, there I go, back into trouble again. So we'll have to both remember that in the future, and I certainly wish you every bit of luck that you're going to need, and security for the future. What is cycling? It should be fun. It should be enjoyment. It is fun now for Mark Fidello, cycling the same lanes and countryside that Jackie Stewart cycled as a boy, learning gradually the technique of machine handling that was to make him a motor racing champion. Yes, cycling is fun as long as you're safe. Take Jackie's advice. Keep your cycle in good order. Know and obey the rules of the road.